The, the king, king shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks. When beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy awakes. Not as a fool, a little child, to suffer and to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We begin the season of Advent, and on this first Sunday in the Gospel, Jesus commands us to stay awake for his coming into the fullness of time. So we pause as we begin to reflect on the times we've been so caught up in the demands of everyday living that we've not been fully awake to Jesus coming to us here and now. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Man. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you will come in glory in the fullness of time. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light that dispels darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, to resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now 
than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore stay awake for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us lay aside the work of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's an interesting reading with interesting images for this time of year, for ever since we set the clocks back from daylight savings time, it feels like it's getting dark so early. So what do we do? We put on an extra light, or we put the light on earlier in the day to sort of stave off the darkness. I grew up in North Dakota where it was much colder than it is here in the desert, and this was the same time of year we had to put on an extra sweater or bring out the fleecy blanket to put it over our legs while we watch TV. We're putting on all kinds of things this time of year. We put on extra lights on the front of the house to make it festive, but we also, some of us, put on a few extra pounds in this holiday season or put on more debt than we should on our credit cards. Maybe we put on fancy clothes and go to parties or put on our best dishes for our guests. But Paul reminds us in this second reading and Jesus warns us in the gospel, all things we put on this time of year may make it harder for us to clothe ourselves with Christ. And these two readings, the first warning us of dangers of drunkenness and debauchery, and the other reminding us that we never know for sure the hour when the end is near, they seem pretty somber for the beginning of a season like this as we're gearing up for holiday festivities. We want to put on the mantle of joy of this season, not the sackcloth of ashes of the penitent. We want no guilt with the glitter of windows and wrappings and trimmings and trees. And this is why Advent can be one of the hardest times for faithful Christians, because we're exhorted to hold off celebrating for four more weeks, to embrace the darkness and the silence and the cold before 
we can put on the carols and the presents and the golden glow of the one Christian holiday that is most firmly embraced by all of the world? Why should we put on the color of solemnity just as everyone else is putting on more festive dress this year? In our gospel, despite the kind of ominous overtones, the theme of what Jesus is saying is to be prepared, to know that our lives as Christians are not just marked by attending church or by assenting to certain beliefs, but they're marked by how we live our everyday lives, eating and drinking and working and living together. Our faith is about how Jesus Christ, born into this world as a small spot of light in the darkness, helps us to believe and to live like we believe that love and forgiveness and redemption and hope have a part in every choice that we make on every regular day of our calendar. And so on this first Sunday of Advent, we have this sense of preparation of not knowing when it will be that we most need to be ready. It's not meant to scare us, it's meant to remind us that God is funny about the way God appears. The kingdom of heaven is already around us in so many ways and how often do the other things that we put on, like our worry, our anxiety, our care about the future and the things and the deadlines that we all have how often all those things that we've put on already keep us from being able to put on that tight-fitting armor of light that St. Paul reminds us of. And so we have to take off the fears and the pains that weigh us down, that we carry around like heavy wool coats, that we try to wrap up in festive themes for the occasion, but really sometimes we just need a moment of silence, a place of cool quiet to unburden our hearts and our souls of what is troubling us. We have to take off the feelings of isolation because of habit or because of life circumstance that while we are enjoying the comforts of this time of year, this is the time to take off the blinders that keep us from realizing that every day there are those who have nothing to put on for the holidays, no parties, no warm clothes, no reasons for joy. And each of us has our own individual list of those things, the pressure to be perfect, especially this time of year, the striving to be what we are not, the dingy collection of grudges that's stuck in our corners. If we really want to shine, it's time to let these go. Advent preparation, although it's a solemn time, is really about going right through the darkness rather than trying to circumvent it. In order to cast it away, we need to get a really good grip on it. We need to strip off what would normally hide it, as counterproductive as that seems. Because the true light, the true joy that we are getting ready for, is not something we create or find it comes to us when we are ready and waiting for it. To put on the armor of light is to rejoice that we've marched right through the darkness and found that we're not alone. We will not be left in our suffering. We will be met with hope and peace and love in the moments that we dare to take off the kinds of armor that the rest of the world seems to demand we wear, cynicism, and defensiveness, and isolation, and fear. So for these four weeks, we put on light, maybe even one candle at a time. We remind ourselves to take off those things we do not need and to wrap ourselves in the warmth of what is coming, the light of the world slowly appearing when we need it most. Put on the blanket of truth, Put on the mantle of hope. Put on the armor of light.
Together then, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we enter into this season of Advent, let us make our needs known to God. That all members of the church live in such a way that they encounter the Christ who comes in everyday ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil authorities lead their people so that the cities and the nations of the world be safe and peaceful for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those burdened by the daily demands of time may discover the freedom and fullness of God's time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us here stay awake to Christ's coming to us, both now and in the glory at the end of time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you desire that all people come to the fullness of life. Hear these our prayers, that we might fully be awake and prepared for the coming of your Son. We pray through that same Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your many gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. On us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Today, uh, I'm certainly sure you appreciate the celebration of Mass and how much it means to you and means to so many in the community to be the heart of a worshiping community, to give praise to Christ. And so I ask you, uh, in your goodness, to continue your support and generous support of our television ministry here in the Diocese of Las Vegas. And may God bless you for your generosity. <laughs>